welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. And joining me for this week's episode is Brenda Christensen, a PhD student at the University of Guelph and a returner to the podcast series. Brenda, thanks very much for coming back on the show. In case somebody didn't catch our first episode, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, so thank you so much for having me back. I'm really excited to be sharing some of the uh, recent work I've been doing throughout my PhD program. Um, So I'm a PhD student at the University of Guelph. I work with Dr. Leanne Huber and Dr. Elijah Chiari. Um, So before starting my PhD, I completed my bachelor as well as my master's program at the university. Um, I completed my master's project with Dr. Leanne Huber as well. And for that project, I was looking at um, different creep feed forms and compositions and the effect on post weaning performance and gut physiology. Well, that was the topic on our first podcast, Brenda, was creep feeding and, you know, what can we do to help that post weaning pig? Uh, Same big picture topic for today. We want to talk about what can we do to help that post weaning pig um, and really the just help the pig around that weaning transition. But I know your research has evolved a little bit and you're kind of looking into some uh, postbiotic yeast additives. Um, added specifically to nursery diets. You want to talk to us a little bit about um, why why approach that avenue? You know, what's exciting about the uh, postbiotic yeast additives that maybe makes us think that it's a value proposition to producers? Yeah, so, you know, we're looking for alternatives to infeed antibiotics and pharmacological levels of zinc oxide. Of course, we're seeing a lot of this pressure Um, with the recent ban from the EU. Um, So we're looking at ways to reduce that negative growth performance and gut barrier function that's typically associated post-weaning. So for my PhD work, I'm feeding a postbiotic additive to pigs um, to determine its effects on growth as well as immune and gut function. Um, So before I get into the experiment too much, I just want to explain to you what I mean by a postbiotic. So a postbiotic is a bacteria or a microorganism, in this case, a Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is a yeast um, that has been grown in a media and then enzymatically treated to deactivate it. Um, So this essentially opens up the cells and allows for greater interaction with the microbes as well as the gut. Um, So what makes this additive so favorable in this application is its cell wall components, which have immune modulating uh, properties. So specifically the beta-glucans in man and oligosaccharides. So um, beta-glucans work by enhancing the function of macrophages and neutrophils, which can improve the immune response and reduce inflammation, whereas uh, man and oligosaccharides can prevent the binding of bacteria such as E. coli and salmonella species in the intestine and essentially reduce that um, enteric disease such as diarrhea that they can um, result in. So... Uh, For my first study of the PhD project, I fed this additive to nursery pigs, and we compared that to a um, high zinc oxide diet, to a control or to a yeast and zinc oxide fed in combination. Um, So for this project, we fed them in two phases, uh, phase one for 14 days and phase two for 28 In phase one, we provided the yeast at 0.5% and then the zinc oxide at 3,000 parts per million. And then we have these inclusion levels in phase two. At the end of phase one, we dissected one pig per pen um, for determination of histomorphology, jejunal IgA, as well as expression of nutrient transporters and tight junction proteins. So this was a pretty big study. So I'll just kind of touch upon some of the main findings from it. So first, we found that the yeast was just as effective in improving the body weight by the end of the nursery period as the zinc oxide. Uh, We also found that yeast improved the villus height to crypt depth ratio, as well as increased jejunal IgA concentrations. And of course, this is really important as IgA is the major immunoglobulin responsible for protecting mucosal uh, barriers. Um, We also looked at the expression of tight junction proteins and nutrient transporters. We didn't see any differences um, attributed to the yeast, but we did to the zinc oxide. Um, so we kind of, when we look at the growth performance, um, 
by phase, we didn't see any differences in the yeast versus the control in phase one. Um, but that improvement in end of nursery body weight that I talked about uh, was really driven by the improvement in phase two growth performance. So we kind of think that looking at these parameters at the end of phase one, maybe the yeast wasn't consumed in high enough quantities or for a long enough duration to elicit a response. So maybe if we looked at them at the end of the nursery period, we would have seen improvements with these. And then the last major finding I wanted to present was um, we found reduction in E. coli concentrations in the ileum when the yeast and the zinc oxide was fed in combination. So this study, we saw that the yeast was effective in improving end of nursery body weight, as well as jejunal IgA concentrations and histomorphology, as well as it worked together with the zinc oxide to reduce the E. coli concentrations. The uh, beta-glucans are certainly something that's been around for a little while. Um, is the product that you used in your studies a commercially available product, or is it an experimental product that uh, may become commercially available in the future? Um, it is a commercially available uh, product. And, you know, there's so many different yeast additives on the market. Right now, and this one is different because it has such a high concentration of the beta-glucans at 40%, um, which is, you know, why it's more effective or, you know, has more of that functional uh, component to it. Brenda, what about future steps for your research? Um, is there a way in which we can look at the application of these postbiotics or some of their individual components like a beta-glucan, something like that? Is there a way we can apply this to other production phases or, or other areas of our pig production process? Um, yeah, so I'm really happy you asked that question. So this project is the first of three projects I'm conducting for my PhD work. Um, so after this project, we were actually feeding it to gestating and lactating sows. So for that project, we were comparing different inclusion levels compared to a control and selecting one that optimized immunoglobulin transfer as well as uh, suckling pig um, growth, so weaning weight. And then basically from there, I'm conducting a study currently um, combining the two together. So looking at um, gestating, gestating and lactating supplementation, as well as nursery supplementation um, with the idea of if we can boost pre-weaning immunity, can we target that acute phase? So like three to four days post-weaning. And then by providing it in the nursery, will they have a lasting effect um, further on? So we're following those animals to market, actually. L-Biotics, the pioneer postbiotic for digestive health in pigs. Brought to you by Adair Biome. With over a century of experience in postbiotics for digestive health, L-Biotics contains heat-treated lactobacillus cell bodies and their metabolites. Stable by nature, L-Biotics can be easily stored and incorporated in compound feed. Very good. We will look forward to a part three to learn more about that. Yeah, I hope so. Maybe in a year from now I can be back on. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you, Brenda. I appreciate you coming on the show. Great information previously and, and wonderful to have you and, and share. With, thank you for sharing with us again. Um, to our audience, thank you very much for listening um, uh, to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinehealthblackbelt.com if you haven't already. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on our next episode. For Brenda Christensen, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thanks for joining us and have a great rest of your week. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com. The journey of a hero has challenges, battles, and villains. But after the fight is won, new paths are open.
and it's time to catch our breath and move forward. More powerful and super than ever. And you, hero of the swine industry, do you have your cape ready to take new flights? Swine Talks 2023, December 6th and 7th. Together, we're more super than any obstacle.